2014, the U.S. Air Force Headquarters seriously proposed to remove the A-10 attack aircraft from service in order to save budget funds and send them to other needs. But as a result of the unfolding discussion, it was decided to continue the use of these aircraft, improving them as much as possible with the help of advanced technologies. The aircraft received a new cockpit layout, more modern weapons and other improvements. Let's take a closer look at how the effectiveness of combat aircraft has increased and why other countries should worry. History The American single-seat twin-engine attack aircraft, Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt II, was put into service in 1976. For its characteristic appearance, the device received the unofficial nickname Warthog. It is designed to provide air support for ground forces, destroy tanks, armored vehicles, and other ground targets. It demonstrates excellent maneuverability at low altitude, can be based on unpaved airfields, and has 11 weapon hardpoints. The aircraft's main standard weapon is the world's most powerful 30mm GAU-8 Avenger air cannon, specially designed for it. The A-10 was developed at the height of the Cold War. It was assumed that if the USSR launched an offensive in Germany from the German Democratic Republic under its control to the Federal Republic of Germany, then the so-called Fulda Corridor, 50 kilometers long, would become the main battlefield. It was expected that it was in this direction that Soviet armored formations would attack. To successfully stop the offensive, an aircraft was needed that could effectively destroy enemy armored vehicles from the air at low altitude. A competition was held between American companies to create an aircraft that would be optimal for solving this problem. After a number of tests, the victory in the competition was awarded to the apparatus manufactured by Fairchild Republic, which was later given the name Thunderbolt II, in honor of the famous fighter-bomber of the Second World War, P-47. Combat Use the first combat use of the A-10 occurred in 1991, during the Gulf War. 144 attack aircraft made about 8,100 sorties. During the conflict, they disabled over 1,000 Iraqi tanks, 2,000 other ground vehicles, as well as two helicopters, and about 1,200 artillery mounts and guns. One of the most successful of that campaign was the fighter named Alligator, which destroyed 18 tanks, 10 armored vehicles, and 20 trucks. During Operation Desert Storm, it turned out that the A-10 was able to continue flying even with extremely serious wing damage, which would inevitably lead to the crash of most other models. In addition, attack aircraft participated in the NATO military operation in Yugoslavia in 1999 and in the war in Afghanistan since 2001, where they successfully fought the Taliban. And in Iraq in March through April 2003, at least 60 fighters were involved. Modifications the most large-scale model update in recent years has been the A-10C modification. Attack aircraft received an improved cockpit and a laser designator unit with high-precision weapons. But after it was decided in 2014 to extend the operation of these aircraft until at least 2035, plans appeared to introduce a number of other major innovations in this modification. As part of the project, part of the A-10 fleet was fully brought into line with new technological standards by July 2019. The main goal of the modernization was to increase the survival of the attack aircraft in difficult conditions. It was planned to achieve this result by providing the opportunity for pilots to use high-precision weapons from long distances and apply new, more effective combat tactics, relying on technological superiority over the enemy. Major Matthew Kading, commander of the A-10 tests, gave examples of improved combat tactics that the U.S. Air Force is currently developing. Taking into account the new capabilities of the device, they are focused on improving the efficiency of combat missions at night, at medium and low altitudes. Work is also underway to adapt methods for hitting sea targets using ARG-20 missiles for the A-10C. An increase in the ability of attack aircraft to fully function in particularly difficult conditions, with minimal support, is being carried out. The previous version of the A-10 had a significant drawback. During its combat use, cases of friendly fire periodically occurred. Several serious incidents are known when the Thunderbolt accidentally fired on NATO ground forces. This was due to the fact that according to its mission, this aircraft must make attacks on enemy ground targets, next to which there are US or Allied infantry and equipment at that very moment. But the specialists involved in the re-equipment of machines before the modification of the A-10C made every effort to, if possible, exclude such situations in the future. 
Reduce the likelihood of an unintentional hit on friendly positions will help not only the use of more accurate guidance technologies, but also the introduction of a new positioning system. Now advanced air traffic controllers can transmit information about their current location in digital format to attack aircraft as quickly as possible. By 2017, the Lars V-12 onboard rescue system was installed on all aircraft of the series, which made it easier for pilots to exchange information with people on the ground, rescue teams, and pilots of downed aircraft. Thanks to this, machines in the air in real time receive promptly updated data on the progress of evacuation operations. Also, Thunderbolt pilots had the opportunity to hit several targets at once with weapons of several different types in one pass. Targeting is carried out at the touch of a button. While previously this action required the pilot to spend much more time and effort, a full integration of the AGR-20 APKWS system, which turns Hydra-70 unguided rockets into high-precision munitions, was carried out. A GPS-based JDAM suite of equipment converts free-falling bombs into all-weather correctable so-called smart munitions. When choosing 500-pound GBU-38 or 2,000-pound GBU-31 ammunition, after targeting, the system will automatically predict whether it will be possible to hit all the intended targets in one go and notify the pilot of the results of the calculations. An improved Hobit helmet-mounted sight is added to the combat equipment of the Thunderbolt pilots. The abbreviation in its name stands for Hybrid Optical-Based Inertial Tracker. The device is an updated version of the Thales Visionix Scorpion helmet, which has been used by the U.S. Air Force since 2013. Hobit is sensitive to head movements, accurately reading changes in its position, with state-of-the-art optical sensors. The A-10C incorporates new communication systems to ensure the rapid transmission of threat data between all attack aircraft involved in the sorting. Hardware integration of GBU-39 SDB-guided high-precision bombs of small diameter, anti-jamming GPS, and ARC-210 radio stations is being carried out. An audio system with 3D sound is being introduced, thanks to which radio messages are separated from threat warnings and other sources of noise, which in combat conditions allows the pilot to focus on exactly what is important at the moment. If earlier in the A-10C the cockpit was equipped with an analog control panel, now it is being replaced by HRDS, a multifunctional color display with a diagonal of 11.6 inches and a resolution of 1920 by 1080 pixels. It is capable of displaying a clear image with targeting and supports a new mapping engine. Speaking about the modifications of the A-10 attack aircraft, it is worth mentioning separately its unmanned version of the A-10 PCAS, developed by Raytheon and Aurora Flight Sciences. It began to be created back in the 2000s. It was originally planned that this machine would have the possibility of optional remote control, but this idea was abandoned in favor of an unmanned version, in which the machine can only be controlled remotely from the base. With the development of IT technologies, it became possible to equip an attack aircraft with an artificial intelligence unit, and now the device can function automatically, obeying a simple set of standard commands. Thus, today it is the largest and most powerful combat drone in the world, in terms of firepower, it is inferior to its manned older brother, but surpasses any other drones. Should other countries be afraid of the new A-10? Of course, the A-10 attack aircraft is a serious threat to potential adversaries of the United States and NATO countries. Its closest competitor is the Su-25, which is in service with the armies of the Russian Federation and some other countries that were once part of the USSR. But even before the large-scale re-equipment of the A-10C modification, the Soviet analog was noticeably inferior to the Thunderbolt II attack aircraft in most performance characteristics. Now, as the Warthog Improvement Project comes to an end, the new A-10s are far ahead of the Su-25. In fact, the American aircraft is now a full-fledged combat vehicle of the 21st century, while the Soviet counterpart remains hopelessly stuck in the 20th century. The baptism by fire of a fully functional new modification of the Thunderbolt has not yet taken place. But if you believe the assurances of representatives of the U.S. Air Force and the project is really being implemented successfully, then this aircraft has reached a fundamentally new level of survivability, accuracy, and tactical efficiency. This means that the plain-looking attack aircraft has turned into a real nightmare for armored vehicles and ground forces of a state that will have the misfortune of fighting against NATO. As for the availability of A-10 drones, they will greatly simplify and reduce the cost of solving combat missions, where there is no need to use the skill of pilots, risking their lives. This concludes our video. Like, comment, and subscribe to our channel to always have access to up-to-date information about modern military equipment. We wish you good luck and a peaceful sky over your head.